Hi, I'm a high school teacher, which means there's a lot you think you know about me. But the truth is, there's a lot you may not know about the teaching profession. For example, teachers in the U.S. rate their lives better than all other occupation groups, trailing only physicians. In partnership with Healthways, research group Gallup surveyed over 172,000 working adults in the U.S. and asked them to rate their lives on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst possible life, 10 being the best. The results were analyzed by occupation groups, which ranged from construction to sales. And you know what the results showed? Teachers in the U.S. rate their lives better than all other occupation groups, trailing only physicians. I asked Matthew Blackman, a science teacher in Somerset, New Jersey, to join us and put our facts to the test. So what do you say, Matthew? Is it true that teachers rate their lives so high? Yes, it is true. I still, uh, I still get excited to go to school. I look forward to each and every day because each topic, I mean, my students laugh because each topic that I teach them, I, I start with, you know, this is going to be the best topic that we've learned about in the year. And they said, you know, you say that about every topic. And I say, I mean it for every topic. Uh, I really, really love physics. And around, you know, junior year of college, I, I realized that the thing that I love most about it is sharing it with others. And, and that made me realize that teaching was the perfect profession for me. I'm curious, Matthew, what does your day-to-day -day look like? My day-to-day -day life is, is pretty consistent. It's really um, something that I, enjoy doing so it goes by very quickly and by the end of the day let's say around maybe 2 30 or so um, i can head home and start doing other things which is when i you know work on things like my website i make uh, educational games and also you know things like i like to cook and i like to work out and i like to you know watch some netflix and things like that so i, I find that i have i have a really um, relaxed day. I also reached out to Corey Risky, a materials engineer at an aerospace company, to hear what she thinks about our research. So Corey, when you hear that teachers rate their lives as high as they do, what goes through your mind? I can relate to that. Um, having been a tutor, having been a TA when I was an undergrad, how teaching would be extremely fulfilling. How do you feel about the path you've taken as a materials engineer? I have, I have a really great job. It, you know, about half of it is at my computer where I'm you know, typing up documentation, I'm writing documents. This is a procedure for how you do this. Um, this is how we're going to process these connectors. This is how we're going to process these cables. Um, and, and then the other half of my job is kind of running around, uh, being in lab spaces, helping out with whatever technicians need or you know, having a consult. Um, for a, a tricky materials pr problem, and uh, it just makes it really fun. And what does your day-to-day -day look like, Corey? My day-to-day, -day, usually my morning starts out with uh, opening up my email, for better or worse. Then I'll have like my meetings where I <laughs> try to help either in design. They say, okay, we have this thing that we need to build. Uh, what are some considerations? What are the requirements? What are the, um, you know, are there any roadblocks that we need to consider ahead of time before we get there, that kind of thing, so planning. And, uh, and then there's the hands-on part, which I really enjoy. So after I'm done with my meetings, I can go down into the lab spaces and say, okay guys, what do you got? So they'll show me their optic and, or they'll show me their camera and say, okay, this is, this is a situation we have. Uh, you know, what do we need? I'll be like, okay, it's, uh, it's, it's something that we can remove. You just take a swab with this chemical on it and remove it like that. or um, that's never going to come off. Just uh, <laughs> see if the customer will take it as is. You know, there, there are several situations like that, but I do love uh, getting under a microscope and, uh, and taking a look with the technicians or the engineers that are involved with the, with the hardware and, um, and get some hands-on. I just love hands-on. I love building things. I love delivering things um, to the customers. Um, and, uh, and so that's a very special part of the day. Mind telling us why you didn't pursue teaching as a career? I guess my parents sort of instilled in me a desire to um, have some sort of more financially reliable career path. I'm glad you brought that up. It's a belief many people share about teachers. And while many of them are driven by a passion for education, studies have shown teaching to be a more than financially reliable career. In fact, Mid-career teacher salaries typically range between $60 and $100,000. Let me break that down for you. 
The research team here at GFO has analyzed schools from nearly 400 districts across the United States. They start by looking at each district's salary schedule. These are public records that show what teachers are paid based on variables like education levels and years of experience. Public records. That means you can do some sleuthing and see what districts in your community pay their teachers. The GFO team compiles this information into summary statistics that show a range of potential salaries based on a teacher's education and experience. Based on those ranges, someone with a master's degree and at least 15 years of experience can expect to make between $61,000 and $89,000 per year. That's not including all the opportunities teachers have to make additional income through optional activities like coaching, after-school clubs, and tutoring. Still not convinced? A study hosted by the National Center for Education Statistics independently verifies our own data. So Corey, when you hear that mid-career teacher salaries typically range between sixty dollars and $100,000, what goes through your head? It, it surprises me that, that teachers would be making that much uh, mid-career, and uh, I think it's wonderful. I did not know. I, <laughs> I'm a little surprised that, it would, that the range would be so, so great. You know, at first, when I started teaching, I just kind of took the first job. And then after a few years, I started looking around and, and realizing so some people had negotiated a little bit better when they came in. And then, you know, after um, I moved to my current district, I was able to negotiate a little more with a little more experience. So I would be a little towards the higher end of that, that range that you gave. But also there's something about teaching, which is, I think, really important as well, which is that it's it's recession proof. Teaching is a profession that's never gonna go anywhere. A rewarding career isn't all about the living you can make, but the life you can lead. And as a teacher, you get the best of both. See, teachers have a great work-life balance because of the flexible summers that they can use to travel, learn, spend time with family and friends, recharge, and plan for the next year. Just look at a typical teaching contract, which is somewhere between 180 and 190 working days. Compare that to 240 days most private companies expect their employees to work, and you'll see why 78% of high school teachers are still in the classroom after five years of teaching. Because as hard as teachers work throughout the year, those flexible summers give them the chance to relax, recharge, and return fresh for the next class of students. Plus, their schedules are determined at the beginning of each year. That means they can plan vacation months and months in advance. Individuals working for private companies, on the other hand, report that vacations must be planned around work commitments, which are not always clearly defined. It's also rare for a company to schedule breaks outside of the national holidays. Let's get back to our friend Matthew. What's your work-life balance as a teacher actually like? The work-life balance, I think, is really ideal. That flexibility is something that makes it easier to consider, you know, teaching for decades and decades. Because you know, each year when you come back in September after you know, a few months, um, where you can essentially do what you want, uh, it feels brand new again. That's outstanding. I I think that's amazing that uh, such good work-life balance is built into the career. You know, having a better work-life balance has been a goal of mine for several years. If all of our careers had that kind of rhythm, then we'd probably all be more successful. <laughs> having summers off isn't the only way you can travel the world as a teacher. In fact, you can get a job almost anywhere in the U.S. or abroad as a science or math teacher. Every high school and middle school in every state needs teachers with degrees in mathematics, engineering, and the sciences. But universities are not graduating enough of these majors to fill the teaching jobs. That presents you with the opportunity to settle down wherever you'd like, even if that's overseas. Countries all around the world have needs for math and science teachers to teach in English-speaking American schools. These positions typically come with a relocation allowance and airfare. Many international schools even include accommodation, healthcare, and provision for dependents. It's really, it's really nice. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's very comforting. It's something that's very rare to, to know that, you know, if something were to happen and you had to pick up and go elsewhere, that there's always a demand and there's even a shortage in most places. In addition, it gives you some, some bargaining uh, position. And I would urge all those who are listening to this, if you're a first year teacher in one of these subjects that's in higher demand, use that to your advantage. My family is, is in New Jersey, New York, and I made a promise with my, my siblings when I was young that we wouldn't go more than an hour's drive away. Um, 
you know, our kids are going to be the same age and, and grow up together. So for me, there's a tremendous amount of value in that and it's incredibly important. Um, but I also have friends who I graduated with who are teaching now overseas, who are teaching, you know, one in Canada, one in Hong Kong, one in New Zealand. And there's also a few teachers I know who are uh, go going to a new country every three, four, five years and trying, you know, a new set of scenery. And, you know, if you like to travel and you uh, don't have as many you know, things tying you down to a specific place, then teaching, especially a subject that's in high demand, is a way to you know, live that more, you know, of a traveler's lifestyle and then get to enjoy, you know, that aspect of uh, your youth. Yeah, that sounds like an excellent opportunity. I mean, if I could do it all over again and, and consider that, uh, I could see a different part of the world and, and share in that culture for a year. That's, that sounds very, very enticing. I'm curious, do similar opportunities exist in the aerospace industry? Uh, you would, you'd have to be very strategic about which company you chose to, to incorporate a sort of um, adventurous lifestyle, I think uh, that would be difficult to accomplish. Now, we've talked a lot about the perks of a career in teaching, but what comes after? Lucky for you, most teaching jobs have better retirement benefits than private industry. And in fact, teachers in the U.S. retire at age 59 compared to age 63 for all other occupations. If you become a public school teacher, your retirement plan will most likely be a pension plan managed by your state. Work for a private company, and that plan will likely come in the form of a 401k retirement account. What's the difference, you ask? The difference is between counting on your retirement and, well, hoping for it. See, a pension is a defined benefit plan. That means your retirement benefits are known from the start and don't depend on the stock market. A 401k retirement account is considered a defined contribution plan. You may know what your employer will contribute each year, but you won't know exactly what your payout will be when you retire. That depends entirely on how much you save and how well your investments do. After retirement, teachers receive a set amount with regular cost of living raises for the remainder of their lives, no matter how long they live. With the 401k, you've got to estimate your life expectancy, which no one wants to do, and set up a payout based on that expectancy. Now, it is important to mention that every state's pension plan is different. Let's take a look at Colorado's. A teacher becomes vested just after five years and is eligible to retire after 35. That means if you start teaching at 22, you could be kicking the apple by 57. Even better, Colorado offers teachers 87.5% of their highest earned income every year once they retire after 35 years. That would be $87,500 if your highest annual income was $100,000. Now just imagine how much you'd have to save to match that. Oh wait, you don't have to imagine because we've done the math for you. Using the average rate of return for the stock market over the past 90 years, we calculated that a person would need to save $21,600 per year for 35 years to retire at 57 with a pension equal to a typical Colorado school teacher. If the retiree lives longer than the average life expectancy, then you better hope they've saved more than that to have their retirement last through their lifetime. Matthew, what's it like over there in New Jersey? After 10 years, you get vested into the pension system. So even if you leave teaching or go somewhere else or to another state, um, 10 years and in and you'll get a pension once you retire. It does give teachers a lot of flexibility with you know how they want to plan out their retirement, uh, but also security that they will you know, be able to retire at a reasonable age and still be able to you know have some years of retired life after after that son. Just like Matthew said, teachers in New Jersey become vested in the pension system after just 10 years. They're eligible for full retirement after 42 years and early retirement after only 30. After full retirement, teachers earn 70% of their final average salary for the rest of their lives and still qualify for Social Security benefits. An individual in private industry would have to save about $12,000 for 42 straight years to match those benefits. Now, Corey, how does all that compare to your impression of teachers and retirement? That, 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 that's completely opposite of what my impressions have been. It's quite surprising. I had no idea that teachers could be taken care of so well. Did not know that they could retire so early. Uh, that's wonderful. Um, yeah, I, I had no idea. 
There's a lot you may not know about the teaching profession. We at GFO are here to get the facts out. Learn more about becoming a teacher at getthefactsout.org.